Right, in today's video, we're going to look at a possible SAP technical ABAP interview question that you might not have prepared for. A lot of good interviewers out there will want to get a feel for not only your technical ABAP coding skills, but also how you approach relatively abstract problems that may not easily translate directly into code. One such example is the game of FizzBuzz. If you've come from other programming languages, you might have already heard of this game, but essentially the interviewer would ask you to do the following. Output a list of a random number range, let's say 1 to 100, so something like this. Uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, etc. Then, every time a number is exactly divisible by 3, you need to change the number to output the word fizz. If the number is directly divisible by 5, you need to change the number to the word buzz. And if, it's, if the number is divisible by both 3 and 5, for example 15, you need to output fizzbuzz. And the interviewer will be looking at three things. First of all, how do you approach a simple problem like this? Do you just quickly slap together something that works in a more or less functional way? Or do you structure things in a more object-oriented fashion with the view of keeping things as readable and maintainable as possible? Then they'll look at how familiar you are with old and new ABAP syntax. And finally, they'll look at the complexity of your finished code. Is it simple and easy to read, or is it quite complex and hard to make out? So let's go ahead and create our local class. And we'll call it LCL FizzBuzz. And this is our definition. And create private. Um, in the class, uh, create create private means that the um, you can only instantiate the class from within a method within the class itself um, or one of its friends um, and not from anything any external sources. So we're going to add our public section, protected section in this order and private section. Then in our public section, I would create a class method called create, which we're going to use to return um, an ob the, the instantiated object of this class. So we'll need a returning value And we'll call it RO FizzBuzz for our FizzBuzz object, which is great. Um, what's the problem here? Oh, uh, we need to type that, type ref to LCL FizzBuzz. Then we need an instance method which we'll call run, and that'll just simply run our, um, run our solution. So, um, as always in Eclipse, we can press, we can highlight um, the class definition, and we can press Control-1, and we can create an implementation. There's our shell again. So, let's go ahead and create our object and that will equal new LCL fizzbuzz perfect now that we have our object let's go ahead and create our local fizzbuzz table. We'll just output a blank table for now to make sure it works. 
fizzbuzz, again using inline declarations here, and we'll use the value operator to give us back a string tab. The string tab is a type, so this will type our table for us. And we should have a blank table. Then I'm going to use cl underscore demo underscore output. And from that, I'll use the display method. Uh, we don't care about this stuff. The display method to display our empty table, which is fizzbuzz. Control F2 and then Control F3 to activate. Then we need our start of selection section. And here we'll call our local class. This buzz call our create method. And once we, uh, we can then use method chaining to simply run our code. And if we execute, we get an empty table called local table this buzz. Now let's go ahead and populate this blank table with our solution. So to start, I'm going to use a for expression where i is equal to 1 while i is less than or equal to 100. And inside this for expression, I'm going to use the conditional operator to take our string value from our string tab. And we want, we want two variables to start with. We first of all want to let LV, let's just say three, and we want to assign that a value which is i mod, which is like the modulo expression um, and determines the remainder. So i mod three. <coughs> Then we want to uh, take our next variable and we'll call it LV5. And that is I mod 5 in. Now we are going to work through the logic that says if divisible by 3 or 5, fizz buzz. If divisible by 3, fizz. And if divisible by 5, buzz with no remainder else give us back um, i from the for expression so when local variable three is equal to zero and local variable five is also equal to zero then we're going to use the string expression to give us back fizzbuzz. Then when just lv underscore three is equal to three, equal to three, then using a string expression again, give us back fizz. Then when lv underscore 5 is equal to, oh, sorry, when LV3 is equal to 0, which means uh, no remainders, then fizz, same thing for LV5, then buzz, using the string expression, and finally we close it off with else, if none of these conditions are met, give us back I, which will give us back a number. So let's just tidy this up. So we've got our local table with our value operator, string tab type. We've got our for expression. And while our for expression iterator i is less than or equal to 100, run our conditional expressional operator 
for the string value. And in that, we apply the logic where we want two variables, LV3 and LV5, to um, take the place of the iterator um, divided by three or five. The modulo is, do is going to determine whether or not there's a remainder. Um, and so these variables will come back with um, either a remainder or not. Then we follow on with the logic after in that says when this is equal to zero and this is also equal to zero, then give us back fizzbuzz, which should happen at a place like 15. Um, and also it's doing the most specific example first and then it's getting more general as we go out. So when LV3 is equal to zero, then fizz, when LV5 is equal to zero, then buzz. And finally, if none of these conditions are met, just give us back the iterator number and put it back in the list. So now we can save Control F2 and Control F3 to activate. And if we execute, here's our list. So let's check. One, two, three, fizz, four, five, buzz, um, six is divisible by three, nine is divisible by three, 10 is divisible by just five, um, 12 is divisible by three again. And here we go, 15, fizz buzz. And the next one, 30, fizz buzz again. So that looks like it works. Now, the, at this point, you might think, well, that's brilliant. I've, I've brought on the solution and we can carry on. The point of doing this in a certain way is because the interviewer might then come with an additional question or an additional point and say, well, I actually want to see anything divisible by two and anything divisible by four, or, or let's just say anything else to be divisible by four um, to also be included um, with the word fizz. So with that, it's, um, because of the way we've structured it um, and in trying to keep it as maintainable and readable as possible, we can just simply go and add LV, or let's add it up here rather, LV4 equals I modulo 4. And if that is in fact case, we can just go when LV4 equals zero, then fizz. And if we save and activate, note that was two additional lines of code and it is incredibly clear as to what we've added and how it works, which means anyone can come along and add or make changes to this if we go ahead and execute this, there you go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we've managed to add a change quickly and on the fly to something we've built um, in as object oriented a way as possible. So as you can see, the point of this is to not only create code that's simple and easy to read, but if a change needs to be made on the fly, it needs to be able to be added not only by yourself, but perhaps another developer um, quickly and easily. So they need to be able to come in and follow this logic and go, well, this means that, that means that I can just simply slot in my four there, my four there, and the output will change and everything will work. And I can let the rest of the program run without changing um, a, a whole a whole stack of different things. Um, so um, I'd be very interested to see if there are other ways that you guys have uh, to solve a problem like this. Um, please let me know down in the comments. And don't forget, if you guys like the video, to hit that like and subscribe button. And thanks for watching.